gonna chalk your front wheels. I would suggest using wheel chalks on both sides of the wheel, but we're facing downhill, so I only need the front ones. Your e-brake's gonna be rendered useless because we're lifting the back end. Lift it up. You want to lift higher than your suspension travel. That means we're gonna go quite a ways up. That is when we transfer the weight of the vehicle onto the jack stands, your axle will droop, bring your tires close to the ground. That should be good. We're gonna go on the, the rail for the frame. Do not lift from the trailing arm. Do not lift from the fuel tank. The fuel tank skid. Transfer the weight from the jack to the jack stands. All right, with the weight of the vehicle on the jack stands, we have clearance. Wheels on either side. These shocks are fully extended. They're what's holding up the axle right now. Do note how little slack you have remaining on your brake line. This hose right here is your differential breather. So you want to apply some WD-40 or some penetrant to the bolts for your shocks and you will want to support the side of the axle with a jack that you remove the shock from. Set the parking brake. Verify that you're working with the appropriate replacement part. Make sure not too long, not too short. Seems to match up just fine. So we will proceed with the installation. This particular Pathfinder is a 2001. Note that the shock is mounted vertically. Earlier Pathfinders usually have your shocks angled in a diagonal fashion. The sizes of these nuts and bolt heads may vary. So what I call out in this example video may vary from what you have. Just note that the uh, alignment of the shock may vary. And I believe the shock part number is the same, whether it's vertical or diagonal. We're going to start on the driver's side. Just a little bit of tension is all you need. This is a 22 millimeter socket. There's a washer, keep track of that. We're gonna be dealing with a 19 millimeter socket on the bolt head and a 17 millimeter socket on the nut. With the nut removed, you 
you may have to hammer out this bolt with a punch. If the bushing gets stuck in the bracket, you can use your jack and drop it down slightly and it, the weight of the axle should pull this out of there. Inspect the stud for cleanliness and condition, as well as the bracket and the bolt. Look for markers or instructions on your shock to determine which is top and which is bottom. This particular model does not specify. However, it does have some writing on it, so I assume we would want this writing to be uh, oriented properly. Also, if you look at the other shock over there, the outer sleeve is on the top part of the shock. So we will install this new shock in this fashion. If you were installing the Bilstein 5100, shocks on your Pathfinder, you'll notice this portion of the shock is skinnier than the factory replacements. What I have done is I have added a washer on the back side that is stainless steel and I have removed the metal sleeve inside the rubber bushing in order to be able to fit the factory stud in there. You want to make sure everything is perfectly clean on that factory stud because the rubber will be riding right on that. When I torque it down, I use the minimum torque spec per factory service manual. And on the upper side, I have modified the mount. The other end of the Bilstein 5100 shock has a narrow portion for the shock mount. It does not fit the factory bracket that comes with the Pathfinder. I have effectively used some stainless steel washers as spacers. The metal sleeve that rides in the bushing is installed on this portion. However, the factory bolt that runs through there is too skinny and rattles inside that sleeve. What I've done is I've acquired a half inch bolt from the hardware store. They sell them at eight grade. Got the appropriate nut for it as well. I had to acquire a half inch drill bit and I drilled through the factory bracket to open up the holes to accommodate this larger diameter half inch bolt. So that in there, everything is solid. There's no slop, there's no rattling. Again, and I use stainless steel washers so they're not going to rust out and eat away at the rubber bushing of the shock. I also tightened this with the minimum torque spec on the factory service manual as well. And this has been through about 10,000 miles and done some heavy off-roading, has not had any issues yet. Um, for the Bilstein 5100s, you can mount them with the bellows down or bellows on the top side. It does not matter. I chose to mount the bellows down on the bottom as the sticker is oriented this way from the factory. Take note, you may have some protruding dimples inside your brackets. My assumption for that so you can hang your shock there, get the top bolt in, and then you'll use your jack to adjust the height of the axle to fit the lower portion on next. Bolt head faces forward. That goes on the back side. I will have the torque spec for this model year listed on the screen. When you have snugged the bolt, do not tor torque it just yet. You want to ensure you get the bottom mount on first. 
and then do the other side. Just a little bit of torque, but not all the way.